Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to the second annual Meet the CEO Forum. Tonight, we have lined up two very distinguished gentlemen. I know you come here with a lot in mind, but most importantly, we come here to learn, share experiences, so that come Monday, we can go back to our workplaces and see what we can be able to tweak so as to move forward. I once was privileged to meet a renowned professor, Professor Ali Mazuri, when I was still young. That tells you I'm not young anymore. And he says something in passing that I've never forgotten and I'll never forget. Professor Ali Mazuri said that the power of what you know is far more superior than the power of what you own. And he went ahead to give the example of the Middle East. He said that for the longest in the Middle East, there's been one major powerhouse, the Israelites. Israel as a nation does not own much, but they dominate the Middle East. Often against Arabs who own a lot in terms of oil and resources. So the power of what you own is far more superior. Rather, what you know is far more superior to what you own. And so as we start the evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are hoping to get to learn a lot more from the CEOs as to what made them get to the heights they are in right now. And tonight, we are blessed by, you know, we are honored by two distinguished gen gentlemen who I'm going to introduce and ask to come to the podium. Some time back, the mid-70s. I'm not sure if all of us were born then, but there was a young man in Belfast who went to school and decided to study a very strange course. He decided to study health, health science, took a master's degree in health science, but not just health science in general terms. He took a master's degree in health science in developing countries. And then he came to Uganda, where 15 years ago, he set up a clinic. That clinic is what today we know as IHK, which is part of the International Medical Group. And sometime last year, something strange happened. It was strange to me, at least. This gentleman resigned from being the CEO of the International Medical Group and joined politics. He became the local chairman for, you know, one of uh, the councils in Kampala. It was strange indeed. But it tells you something, that people who stand out do not do the usual thing. They tend to do things that are different, things that are strange to us. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dr. Ian Clark. Please come forward. Next is another distinguished gentleman. And when I say gentleman, believe me, I chose that word carefully. I've known him for the last, you know, four years. To be somebody who is very focused, somebody who is, you know, excellent at what he does, somebody who has achieved a lot in life, but still remains humble. You know, the humility with which he carries himself is amazing. Now, we you know in this market, there are many banks, but one of the best performers is Standard Chartered Bank. And the guy who heads it is here tonight and be sharing with us his experiences, how he got to the top. And before he joined Standard Chartered Bank as the CEO, he was a CEO in a very difficult market, I must say. Anybody who hears about Sierra Leone, I'm sure you know what comes to mind. He was the CEO of Standard Chartered Bank, and, uh, Bank in Sierra Leone, and he managed it well to a point where they got numerous awards. For the last three years, the bank under his management, Standard Chartered Bank Uganda, has done so well to a point that they've been recognized for the last three years, ladies and gentlemen, by Euro Money as the best bank. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Lamin Majang to the stage. Now, tonight, 
tonight, we're going to be a bit more focused. Not mean that we are never focused. We always are. There's a little bit more focused. We're going to be looking to hear from these gentlemen, the two CEOs. What is it? What is it that, you know, is critical to personal development and excellence? Now, this evening is going to be very interactive, so we will hear from them, but most importantly, we would like to hear from you as well. We like to hear your views, we like to hear your questions, we like those questions, I particularly would like them to be very challenging. We would like these gentlemen to leave tonight, not having told us the obvious, but having peeled the onion and peeled it again and peeled it again to a point where we get to the core, the key things, the key factors that lead to personal development and excellence. And on that note, I'd like to pose my first question to the panelists. Please tell us. Tell us, please. These personal excellence things, what is it about? When I say personal excellence, I'm sure if you are 300 people in this room, everybody has their idea of what personal excellence is. Now, could you please open this discussion by telling us, to you, what does personal excellence mean? And may I ask Dr. Ian Clark to begin? Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm very uh, honored and quite surprised to be here. Uh, and uh, I think uh, congratulations to, uh, well done to meet the CEO Forum for organizing such an event. And thanks everyone for coming. I thought when people had to pay, I was just going to be here with the other panelists and the adjudicator, but maybe a couple of other people. But uh, obviously, there's a, an interest in networking and an interest in these things. Um, when people talk to me, when they use words like excellence, personal development, and excellence, I, I don't know. I, 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 I maybe I. I don't relate to it maybe so well um, because I never think of myself as uh, having um, achieved, you know, uh, um, excellence um, in, in many ways. Perhaps because there's always more to achieve uh, and, uh, and perhaps because I don't have a particular uh, model, role model for myself. To me, let's break it down into the two. Personal development, by its definition, means how you develop as an individual. And what is very unique about us as human beings is our infinite capacity to develop. Um, unlike animals, cows have been cows and they will continue to be cows. But a human being has that unique ability to be better than he was or she was and continue to improve and continue to develop. So that, to me, is personal development. How do you become better than you were yesterday? Now, excellence, excellence is, um, is a state, but uh, it's something that you have to continue to aspire and uh, achieve. How do you become better? How do you become the best that you can be? That to me is excellence. Now these two then, personal development and excellence, if you bring them together, is really how do you as an individual, and I'm sure that's perhaps why we're all keen to, to share our experiences, because there's that yearning in everybody to really be better than you are, or better than you were before. So I think uh, to me that's how I would define it. It's that yearning, that quest in each of us to be better than what we were, and to re, re, uh, really reach out for the best in all of us. Um, Ian said that in his view, uh, you know, the idea of having five-year goals, ten-year goals, I don't think you really go for that. Um, but I actually believe that that, to me, uh, works very well. I think um, it's important that one sets out goals, short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals. I remember I attended a, a seminar many years ago, it was about 20 years ago, and there was this professor who said that 
there was an experiment uh, that was done and people were asked to set goals, you know, five year, 10 year, 15 year, 25 year goals. And he said that out of the room, only about 5% would actually follow that advice. Now, the experiment was done and the 5% that actually did that, that actually took the time to write down their goals, their 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 year goals, they tracked them over a period. And those that wrote down goals far succeeded, had far more success than those that did not write down their goals. Now, it doesn't mean that if you don't write your goals, you won't succeed. But the opportunity or the chances of you succeeding phenomenally by writing down your goals in the short, medium, and long term are definitely very, very uh, enormous. What that does is, it doesn't mean that uh, what you write is cast in stone. You can always change, because as you know, circumstances change, you can always adapt your goals. But it clearly gives you a very defined focus. I've made career choices that I wouldn't have made had I not had that kind of a mindset or, or that kind of a plan. When it, when it came to deciding between alternatives, I always sort of looked at it from the perspective of how does this tie in? It might be advantageous now in the next three years or so, but how does this tie in with five or 10 or 15 years from now? And then I could you know, sort of make those uh, trade-offs. So I think um, goal setting or writing down, the discipline of writing down your goals is actually a very, very critical and important discipline. Thank you, Mr. Laming. And before I ask the audience to ask questions, I'm going to look to my left and ask Dr. Clark. Are you convinced? Convinced about what? About goal setting? About, you know, goal I th setting. I think, I think we're probably saying the same thing from, from different points of view. What I said was that uh, for me, it's, it's, it's a passion to achieve something that drives me. Uh, when I started International Medical Center, I had a clear goal then that I wanted to build a hospital uh, that, that uh, uplifted the medical standards and bridged the gap between you know, first and third world countries and so on. I'm still, I'm still trying to achieve that goal. I believe within the next uh, few years we will achieve that goal. We've, we've got you know, so 15 down, years down the line. You know, so I, I was a very deaf, I'm, very, I'm a very focused person. But probably I don't say, uh, in, I don't say necessarily like in a career pathway in three years and five years and so on. What I do believe as well is that our lives, we should see our lives in seasons. Uh, I had a season uh, when I was a medical student and when I was a doctor in, um, in, in Ireland. And then I had a season when I was, when I was a mission, when I started a mission hospital in Chihuahua Hospital. And then I've had this season when I've been uh, uh, working to develop International Medical Group, and now I have this season when I'm in politics. And I think that, um, you know, we, we I, don't, I don't think, and, and, and one thing builds another, by the way. You know, we, I don't flip from one to the other. They actually build each other. Uh, so I, I think we have to be prepared. We have to be focused. It's, you know, and if you can write down your goals, you know, that shows your, your focus. Um, but sometimes, I, I, I mean this sort of, I wouldn't say that we sh there's a superficial way, you know, maybe some, for some people, I don't know, I've not, I started as an entrepreneur and developed into the corporate side. Some people who are in the corporate side know there's another pathway they need to be focused on. Thank you very much. So please feel free to fill the questions to those CEOs as well as you go along. And on that note, may I ask if there are any questions on the initial comments from our panelists? Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Agaba Tumsimi. I am an entrepreneur, business owner, business development consultant, etc. Um, I heard both CEOs on mentions with regard to their processes for goal setting. Dr. Clark mentioned how his standard of excellence is current, constantly evolving. Once you reach a new goal, you have to set a new one for yourself every time. So there's not a finite level of achievement that you can have out of a single goal. Um, and so you mentioned that writing down your goals, having a specific number of action points that you see as 
a guideline or as a roadmap for you is, is, is a valuable point as well. Now, I just wanted to get a, a, an idea from the two of you gentlemen in terms of being in Uganda, the tough economic times that we're in today right now, there are a lot of challenges that might cause an individual such as myself who's an independent business owner to get discouraged or disenchanted. What do you say to those of us who are out there who are struggling uh, about the power of positive thinking and the power of always keeping the love for the work that you do paramount above any financial performance indicators? My name is uh, Jackson Muleke, director of a company called Metrotar Uganda. Yeah, and, well, they say, it, uh, the gentleman over there was saying, if you write down your goals, if you have a focus, then it's, it helps you a lot to achieve your goals. But, well, I must say my personal experience, I've tried out all those. And it's not that, and I haven't, I haven't had trouble financially, though I've had trouble keeping it. So my question is, how better can I keep focused and uh, how better can I achieve those goals? Thank you very much and thank you the speakers. And um, I'm from the charity sector. And my question is, as you strive for excellence as CEOs, mainly in the corporates, the business sector. How can we people who have set very clear goals in the charity sector tap into the corporate and the business sector? Because one of the things which we set our goals to achieve is to fundraise. And we know that there's a lot of funds with the private and the corporate sector. How can we tap into that money? The first question was, uh you mentioned about goals and focus and setting goals, but then what's the space? Is there space? Is there room for, you know, the power of love, so to speak? All right, thank you very much. I think that was a question from uh, Tumisimi. I think uh, positive thinking, I mean, it's been proven time and time again that uh, by visualizing your goal, by really being positive in your outlook, there are some forces out there that you don't even know that somehow work towards helping you to achieve your goals. So I think power, uh, the power of positive thinking is, it's been proven time and time again. It really works. Um, I read a quote somewhere. They said, no monument has ever been built for a pessimist. A pessimist, somebody who's always looking at the downside, somebody who always sees problems. I mean... That's it. You'll always have problems. The guy who sees opportunities, the guy who sees the glass as half full rather than half empty, would have a better, better chance of achieving his goals. All right? Um, where there's a problem, clearly there is a need to have that problem solved. And in the process of solving that uh, problem, you actually then, you know, actually uh, do, do well for yourself and do well for society. So I, I would just agree that uh, positive thinking is, is, is very, very important. Um, Jackson said that he's been writing down goals, but so far it doesn't work for him. Um, well, I'll say, just keep writing. Um, <laughs> you see, the thing is, when you write, first of all, it's got to be something that you are very passionate about. I think Ian mentioned about how passion is very, very important. There's a difference between, uh, between dreaming about something and actually being passionate about achieving something, all right? So I think uh, when you write down a goal that you say, I want to get a master's degree or I want to you know, achieve this goal by this time, depending on the passion, the conviction with which you write down that goal, then it will happen. But if it is not done with that commitment, that passion, then it just becomes a mere, somebody said, I should write, so I'll write. Um, and, I think, and I think that, that, might, uh, that, might, that might be the case here. The third question, of course, uh, Caleb said uh, we should focus on, on the topic at hand, which is uh, personal development. But uh, all I can tell the lady is that uh, when, I mean, as, as CEO, I receive almost five or six letters every day. Uh, where is Abad? Abad Zaki, my head of corporate affairs. I always uh, pass them on to him. 
Um, you know, it depends on how you present your proposal. It depends on whether that proposal fits within the priority of uh, the organization. There are proposals that we see and we react and we say, this, this is definitely something worth uh, sponsoring. But then there are proposals that just come in and basically you just uh, see that you know, we, we can't do much about this one. So I would say uh, two things. One, make sure that whatever proposal you write is very, very uh, well written with a very powerful uh, argument of why you need funding. And secondly, it helps also if you have a personal touch. I mean, if you arrange a meeting and come and discuss something at a personal level so that you know what's written on paper can actually have a meaning, a different meaning. I think that also helps in terms of uh, securing funding. But all I can say is that, uh, you know, the, the amount of funding is limited vis-a-vis -vis the kind of uh, demand that, that is out there. So we, we, are, we try to be very selective and, and, and prioritize. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Majang.